What's up YouTube? Uh, today I'm going to do a short video on how to troubleshoot a weak or no spark on a 1984 Honda 200 ES. So it has to be a 1984 200 ES because it has the reverse on it. Totally different electrically than a 200. Um, so it's, it's like a bike of its own. You know, the 250 Big Red 1985 and up, they were a beast of their own because I have one of those and this is a beast of its own so it's like every time I get one of these it's a beast of its own but anyways I'm going to start it out by saying there's a lot of videos out there there's a lot of forms a lot of great forms if you have no spark or weak spark as with probably 90% of Americans you have a cell phone and you can just google 1984 Honda 200 ES no spark and you'll find this great forum um, this guy breaks down every wire and every point to shoot uh, with the meter and check for voltage check for grounds So I'm not going to spend a lot of time actually doing this doing that because there's other videos out there. There's other uh, um, Forums on uh, Google but um, I just want to show you what I found what I did and Maybe this is the problem with yours. I don't know but um, I'm gonna start first by saying I got this from a guy um, for a decent price and it had no spark. Well, actually, I take that back. He listed it as reverse light staying on. So, you know, I, I figured maybe the reverse circuit is shorted or the reverse, um, you know, switch is stuck closed. In that case, I can just take the wire off. No, I, I get it and figure out that it's got a new uh, cheap Chinese coil on it. It's got a pulse generator on it, a new one. It's got a, uh, a new CDI box on it, so obviously he's got spark issues. But he sold it to me as, you know, reverse issue should be an easy fix. So when I get it, I realize the reverse issue is because he had a 200 uh, series CDI box without reverse in it. And you have to have the 1984 200ES 696 CDI box. You have to, or it's not going to work. So luckily he had the original CDI box. So I took the crappy new one, the crappy $6 eBay one he threw in there. I uh, put the original back in there. Reverse light goes away, but still no spark. You know, I thought I had it, but no spark. So now I'm like, oh crap, I got a uh, whole nother issue of my own. So, uh, so yes, yeah, I started with the basics. Try to coil, no help. Try to new spark plug, no help. Well, you know, spark plug hole. Still no spark. Um, uh, I checked the air gap on the pulse generator and the pickup rotor, which is right here. So with this at top dead center, you're going to have this notch lined up with that notch. So when those are, when that's at top dead center, I'm not going to be able to get it because I got the plug in, but you just check the air gap. And honestly, I like to do it with a piece of paper folded over because I found I get a way better spark if the air gap's a little closer than OEM specs, but that's just me. Um, so like I said, check the air gap, take these two wires off. So you have the green and the blue sitting out here exposed and just put the meter from one end to the other. Um, and from what I've seen, you want to get a, between, I guess, 10 and 50 ohms. Um, I got 30 on mine and you got to remember all that this is a pulse generator but all it is is a pickup coil so just think coil you know it's got to have resistance so if it shows open circuit between here and here you know that's that's your problem but anyway so mine check good that's the original Japanese part uh, my air gap uh, did not check good which was exciting to me so I reset my air gap <clears throat> on that cleaned up the surfaces here and here Oh, and before, you know, while I was doing that, here's your pickup coil wire off your stator. So what you do is you take your meter and go from here to ground. Should be around 200 to 300 ohms. Like I said, there's a form that tells you your range. I can't remember. All I know is mine is like 230 ohms. And then also you take your uh, meter, go from here to ground, and then put it on AC voltage and with your meter hooked up, you know, turn your key on and start cranking your motor and you should be getting around 
I don't know, 40 to 100 volts AC is what I, I read something different on every forum. I will tell you that my stator, my original stator was putting out 20 volts AC and uh, this new stator puts out 40 something. Um, the one on my big red put out 80. But spoiler alert, my problem was the stator on mine. But when I would do that electrical test, so I'd be cranking the motor, AC voltage, and it would peak at 20 volts AC. But if I kept cranking it every second, it would start going down and down. It was like the voltage was dropping, even the motor was still turning. And it would, it would just baseline around seven volts AC, which I knew was bad, because I went to my 250 Big Red and it was 80 volts and just maintained 80 volts. So, so at that point, I ordered a stator but before I figured that out, before I went and started comparing readings to my other Big Red, this is what I had, which I think is crazy. Um, just crazy, stupid, unlucky. Can't believe somebody was messing this deep with this. So I get this. So I put all the stator connections back together. I troubleshot the kill switch circuitry and the ignition circuitry, making sure I didn't have a, a false ground. So like I said, watch other videos, read other forums. They'll tell you about taking this headlight off, disconnecting wires, and shooting all the wires. So I shot all the wiring from here to my CDI, from all my switches to my CDI. I checked everything for shorts to grounds, for opens. Everything was good. Had At the time, I thought good voltage. I checked everything. Everything was perfect, wired correctly, no issues. So I just was baffled at why I had no spark. And like I said, I adjusted my air gap on here, cleaned the surfaces, and all of a sudden I had spark. But it was like, uh, you know, it was uh, it was weird. It was just popping at a weird when it, it felt like it was sparking when it shouldn't. So, you know, I get the get this uh, air gap set, clean it up, but now I have spark, you know, I'm feeling good, you know, put gas in it, nothing, absolutely nothing, so now I'm absolutely baffled, and uh, so just off of an absolute whim, my brother, he was, me and him were working on this, so I had the inspection covers off for the valves, we were checking our valve lash, while I was working on this, he was working on the valve lash, and he told me to set it to top dead center, you know, firing, pistons closed. So I took the inspection port out, I set it to top dead center, and we noticed that the magnetic pickup rotor right here is facing down instead of up. So it's 180 degrees out, and we verified it, and somebody had taken this nut off, taken this out, and put it 180 degrees out. I didn't think you could do that because it is connected to a mechanical advance, but I took it out and pulled the mechanical advanced ears apart and this sure enough comes right out and you can just rotate it. So now I'm like, holy crap, we fixed it. We figured it out. This is insane that somebody did this. There's no telling how long it's been like this. So I took it apart, put it 180 degrees back where it's supposed to be, tightened everything, put the plug in. I know we're gonna get it to run. She don't run. She popped like two or three times. So it popped. Which that's a good thing, I guess, because it had never popped before. So it's like I keep fixing issues and I could not figure it out. And then, uh, you know, and me and my brother are sitting there and I'm like, dude, we've shot every wire. All the wiring checks good. Every single component has been changed now, except the stator. That's the only thing that hasn't been changed. Oh, and this is why I said at the beginning of the video, this is helping you troubleshoot no spark to weak spark. Because now, you know, setting that air gap and checking all the connections and cleaning everything, I had spark now at this point. But it was weak. I mean, you could barely see it on the plug and it didn't, it was just popping, but it wouldn't run. So I go to my Big Red 250, do the stator voltage check on it, and it's getting 80 volts AC. This is getting 20, dropping to 7. So I'm like, whatever, I'll just buy a stator on eBay and stators are not cheap and they don't make they don't even make aftermarket ones that I know of so I had to buy a used one you know roll the dice um, 
the new stator or the new to me stator comes in ohms good i put it in do a dry motor test it's getting up to 46 volts ac so i'm like hey, you know now we're talking we're twice as good as the other one but this one's not dropping off so uh so yeah we were getting the 46 volts ac here's the plug wire let's put that back in Don't listen to that valve chatter. It's nothing. Um, so anyways, that was the problem. That was the problem my entire time. It was a bad stator. So here's the old one that came off of it. So I'm looking at it. And I'm realizing, I realized this earlier when I changed it. This pickup coil has been changed before. Because this is not an OEM. I checked the part numbers. It doesn't even look remotely the same as the one that I got in the mail. And you can see, you know, somebody had cut the wire and had to solder it on. Because they repaired it. So at some point in its life, this was, you know, aftermarket. And more than likely, it's Chinese junk back when they used to make aftermarket support for this beast. So that's all I can figure is that, you know, at some point the pickup coil, or I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep saying pickup coil. The exciter coil for the CDI unit, at some point the crappy part just failed. And then it was a downhill spiral from there. So, so that was my problem. It was a stator. I have never seen a stator on these. I haven't seen a stator on these old ATCs go bad before, but that one had clearly been uh, dicked around with. So that's all I can figure on that. Um, oh, and another, another thing out there, if you have weak spark, but you do have spark, don't waste your money on a CDI unit. It's not a CDI. Um, Cause you know, if you have no spark, 99% of the time it's a CDI unit. But on mine, my no spark was from the air gap on my pickup coil. Cause I had like, I mean, it was a huge gap. So my no spark was from the air gap. My no running or my no firing was from the can being 180 degrees upside down and then my no running was from a bad stator so i had a, just a plethora of things wrong with mine but you know what that's what makes you learn and you know it might have taken me a few days two weeks but a few days total to figure it out but hey I, i'm better for it and uh you know and i feel like i understand the system a lot better oh and a quick shout out to uh regulatorrectifier.com if you have a 1984 Honda 200 ES and you need a uh, CDI unit for it obviously unless you get lucky and find somebody that's selling an OEM one on eBay used they're still gonna want a lot of money for it and you're you can't really trust it regulator regulator rectifier.com sells OEM 696 CDI units but they are remanufactured I guess you could say like they take the original unit and they rebuild the circuits, whatever. It's it's original, it's not chi this Chinese crap. It's still the original, I, it looks identical to the one that came off of it. So if you have one of these bikes and you think it's your CDI, try that out if you don't get lucky and find one on eBay. There's also another forum out there of some guy showing you how to convert a 200 CDI box to a 200 ES, it's a good read. So maybe check out that as well. But uh, sorry the video is so long. That's just my uh, bit of information on the 84200ES spark issue.